Hey guys, it's Robert again from Australian Camping Four Wheel Drives. So in this episode, we're headed out towards Kenilworth uh, to Balumba Creek uh, National Park out there, and they've got a camping area out there. Actually, they've got four camping areas out there. The first three are areas where you can drive in, and you can just walk over to where you're going to camp. And uh, the last area is an area you can drive in with your camper trailer, and you can set up your camper trailer in that area as well. Uh, it's a little bit of a slight hill uh, in that, that area in there, so sometimes it's hard to find a, a real level spot. Uh, there are a couple of them in there though that uh, you can utilize. So what I suppose what I'm saying to you is if you're going in there, make sure you've got some chocks for your wheels so you can jack up one side of your vehicle uh, if you need to as well. So in this episode, I want to show you a little bit around our camper trailer. Uh, there's a lot of things to go on this camper trailer. So uh, we'll break these episodes up into some smaller chunks for you. And uh, we'll uh, start off with the awning and uh, we might then go into the kitchen after that. After that we might go and have a look at the electrical system and uh, last of all we'll show you the uh, shower which we, uh, we've added onto it as well. Uh, and we'll also um, add in some other things like uh, we did some trips out to some of the, uh, the actual waterfalls out there and uh, some of the other campgrounds uh, we had a look at also. So we'll show you some of those things in there also out to Mullaney we headed out to as well. So uh, yeah we'll chuck all that in there as well uh, but they'll be broken up into other episodes as well uh, coming along. Well then guys, hope you enjoy the episode, here we go. Alright guys, uh, it's Robert again from Australian Camping and Four Wheel Driving. So uh, we're out here at Balumba Creek Campgrounds, we're at Campground Number 4. Uh, it's the area where you can bring in your camper trailer uh, or caravan. Um, I'm pretty sure you can bring a caravan in here, the roads seem to be alright on the way in. Two creek crossings on the way in here. And uh, so what I wanted to show you a little bit was uh, about our camper trailer and how we've uh, built it and set it up and all that. So you'll notice uh, some of the things on the camper trailer already. We've uh, got the uh, drifter awning sitting up here. Now this is their 270 degree awning um, that goes around and it's a, a right angle at the end and we wanted the right angle because inside here we've actually got a drifter kitchen as well. So um, we'll, uh, we'll start go through the setup and uh, we'll uh, show you a little bit of video uh, footage uh, as we're going without setting this thing up. Alright, here we go. Okay guys, so uh, first thing we've got to do, we get these straps, uh, they come with the, uh, the awnings and uh, what we've done on this camper trailer, we just put a little um, hook up here essentially for it to attach to and uh, so what that does is we just push this through and we just pull this through here and then that's going to attach uh, to our, the back of our awning on the other side. So uh, we're going to go around the other side now, we're going to unzip the awning and uh, we'll fold it around. Okay, so this is my daughter, uh, Luella. <laughs> and uh, so she's going to give me a hand to get this thing, awning set up. Generally, you, you need two or three people, I find. Uh, you can do it by one person if you want to. Uh, you just got to know how to unfold the thing, really. And uh, you don't want a windy day, essentially, to do this. Um, if you've got a windy day, you really need two people. Uh, if it's not windy, you could do this yourself. So let's give this a go. So first thing we've got to do is unzip it. So it's got these little zips on it. <laughs> Yeah, a little bit taller. I know it's right up. And then we fold this up over as best we can. Does it 
doesn't matter too much, sweetheart. It's all right. And it's got some Velcro straps underneath here. Uh, that you undo. And uh, then you just fold this out. So uh, what we're going to get you to do, Luella, is I'm going to get you to hold the pole that's around over here. And um, so the one that's underneath here. Yeah. Yep. And uh, then I'm going to go and walk around and fold it out. And we'll, we'll go grab the legs. Sorry about that. It started raining a bit on us. So the last one we've got to whack on goes just up in here. This fits in between. Now what should we do? I almost forgot. We have a special pole for this. So uh, we went and purchased one of these curved poles and uh, the advantage of the curved pole is it'll fit up there and it actually pushes it, bows it out a little bit more. So uh, what you do is this part here just fits in up top here and the other part just fits in over here. And then just pull that taut. That's about it. Beauty guys, so we're pretty much done. I'll get the camera and we'll show you it all. So sorry about that, we had a little bit of rain there, hey, unfortunately. And now hopefully you guys can see clearly. So, um, so this is the basic setup of what we do. So we put our poles up around there and uh, that gives us our space where we can um, uh, cook under and we'll put our tent off, off to the side uh, here tonight as well. So we just got to look at that later on. Generally we put that off over the side over there where Luella is at the moment. But, um, and uh, our drifter kitchen, it'll just pull out. So we'll show you that set up in a moment too, once we've done that. Um, one thing I've noticed, the guys have been not necessarily putting all these poles in. So you'll see up under here, um, we put a pole here and that just keeps this part here taut. But uh, these other ones here, I've noticed the guys have essentially been leaving the poles out. And uh, the reason they've been leaving them out is uh, for when it does rain. At the moment, if you put a pole up here, sure, it keeps it nice and taut. But when it, ra when it rains, all the water uh, pools up there because it's got a pole sitting there in the way. So uh, we've been leaving the poles out. I think if it was uh, the weather was fine, you know, you'd be fine to put them up and all that. But uh, in uh, this environment, uh, we decide to leave them off uh, here anyway. We do have the poles if we need them. And uh, yeah, so we will also put another pole up over here. So we put a pole up in between there, one of those curved ones. So you can purchase those from Drifter. Uh, so essentially it's the exact same pole. It's like one of these ones here, except it's got like a stubby foot at one end. And uh, so I'll just see if I've got that here. Here it is here. Let's grab that out. So Luella, can you hold this pole over here for us and show us the pole? So you'll see at that end there, it's got a little square foot. And at the other end, it's got the uh, U-shaped bracket, the clamp. And uh, essentially what that happens is we, if we go over here, Luella, just head over this way, sweetheart. We're going to get this bracket. So what I'll get you to do, sweetheart, is I'll get you to hold the camera for me. Sure. So you can show the people. Okay. So one end will go up in here. And you undo this thing and slide it out. And the other one, I just clip that on and run. Clips on there. And then just pull that out so it's a bit taut. And we just do it that nut. Beauty. And we'll put the Velcro straps on it and we're done. 
So uh, that's it pretty much set up guys. Uh, we'll go and set up our kitchen and all that now as well and uh, we'll show you that also. Alright then. Hey guys, we're trying to get a bit of footage in before it rains too much again. Uh, we thought what we'd do is we'd show you a little bit about how we set up our kitchen in uh, our camper trailer that we built. Uh, so uh, the camper trailer has got a, um, a solid back on it. Uh, this is a, a tray which pops off just a normal trailer. So this originally was just a normal box trailer. And uh, we took it over to Matt's, Matt's place and uh, he removed the entire bottom of it and built a new frame underneath it to make it a lot stronger and a longer drawbar on us for us. So um, that's been really good. Uh, we went and replaced all the lights and all that on it. We put a water tank on this one as well, uh, which we utilize also when we're camping like this. So uh, what we do in this situation, uh, essentially it's just a matter of just undoing these two things on either side. And uh, knock her off. This whole bit just slides straight off essentially. And uh, we normally just put this around the side of the camper trailer. So the next part is uh, this top part opens up. So one of the beauties about this setup is you can head off for the day like we have and um, you can put everything, lock it away so you don't have to worry so much about um, prowlers or anything like that while you're off camping. Uh, so um, what we've done here is we've also got the gas out here ready to go. So just down there what we do, we, we'll hook up that gas to our stove later on tonight. And uh, so the drifter thing, it's on two slides in here. So we're just going to pull that out and uh, away we go. So I'll just get this stuff here, just move this out of our way just first of all. Keep our brooms and whatnot <laughs> all in there along with, along with all our, our poles and that. So essentially what you do, you get the whole lot, slide it out. We generally slide out to about so far and uh, then we grab the legs which are underneath this. So legs just pop down there, we undo these things, slide them down roughly to roughly about where it's got to go to. Do them up reasonably tight. So I found it's important later on just to come along and just tighten these up a little bit more. Hey, uh, So pull it down. So now you've got the legs out, the whole thing can pretty much come out the rest of the way. Uh, we'll just grab that. So we'll bring it out to about there. Uh, so the next thing we'll do is we'll grab the, this part here. So, uh, so what we'll do next is, it's got these elastic bands uh, on, on the trailer, on the um, kitchen. So you just pull that, open that up over there. This slides open, so it's, it's like slides all the way around. But it's got this uh, little part here that actually just pops out. This little bit here. It's got a little slot up here, we just slide that straight into it. And uh, the next thing we've got to do is we uh, take off the bands off the side. So it's got four bands on it. Lift that up and just put that to the side just for the moment because the next bit you want is actually this part here, okay? So uh, this just lifts up, slides out like so. Uh, one thing that we've done on, on our, our, our part here is we've actually taken off the legs that came supplied because they weren't really long enough and uh, we added some longer legs. And so just get your legs roughly down to where you think they might be, not need to be. Same thing on the other side. Slide down roughly to where you think it might need to be. You're not going to get this exact first go. Open that up. Put that in there roughly right. And uh, then you've got to get your, your tabletop. So uh, this part here, you'll see on this side here, it's got this slot. It's going to fit into the top over here. And on the other side, it's got these two metal brackets here. And they're going to fit into these slots over here. So you get those huts up lined up first. Get them in and then you'll notice this part here is not exactly right. So you just adjust your height until you're about level. Tighten her off. And you're done guys. So that gets your kitchen all set up. So uh, that's how a drifter kitchen works. Uh, next thing we'll show you is what we do for our water. So uh, we're going to bring the camera around and I'll show you how that goes. Okay guys, so what we do is this drawer that uh, you'll see sitting here, I'm just going to show you where the, where the actual hose part is, the hose connector part on this. So what we actually did on this uh, this kitchen is we actually got a uh, replacement cart. So Drifter actually uh, supply 
one of these guys, uh, they come with it. Um, but we also asked them, uh, with our kitchen at least, uh, we asked them to see if they would actually provide us with a, um, uh, one of these ones where it has got a tap on it up top up here. And uh, so the way this actually works is we come over here, we just pull this drawer out, and I'll just get you to grab that uh, out of our way there, Luella. Thank you. And uh, you'll see just inside here, just in there, that's where the uh, the hose goes. And that actually just pops up straight down the bottom. There's actually, if we can look underneath here, we'll just hop up underneath here and see if we can see it. You'll see up underneath there, there's a place where, the, where it actually plugs in. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go around and we're gonna grab the, uh, the hose and uh, I'll show you how it plugs in. So what we've got here, we've got our tap sitting here and uh, that's where our water comes from, comes from our water tanks. And down here, we'll see if we can show you this. So here's our lovely assistant, Kat Luella. She's gonna show us how this actually plugs up underneath here. So I'll just see if we can get this down here so you can see properly. So do you, can you show us how that plugs in Luella? So you pull this down, yep. this little orange bit, and you're gonna just, just try and plug it in there and try and wait till it clicks. Yep, so push that up, sweetheart. So until it. it clicks and it's That's connected. it. Beauty, thanks for that. Okay guys, so um, this is uh, the front of the camper trailer. So uh, with this camper trailer here, what we actually did is we flipped the whole thing upside down and uh, they, the guys actually removed um, the undercarriage from under this unit and we replaced it so it's got a much larger undercarriage on it as well. And at the same time, we added a longer draw bar on the front of it so we could actually fit um, this big storage unit up the front of it as well. So uh, we'll have a look inside of this thing. So inside here what we've got, we've got our Julka hot water system. So we keep the hot water system generally in here, we've got that out at the moment, we're actually using that here while we're camping here at the moment. And uh, we keep all the uh, other cables and whatnot, all the little bits and pieces that you might need uh, when you're off on a trip. What we actually have in there as well, we've got one of those extended hoses, it actually as you drop it like in a pool of water, so if you're camping beside a stream or whatnot, you can still uh, pump the water up and, uh, and still have a hot shower. So having a hot shower makes you feel so much better when you're off camping, uh, it's a good thing to have, so I can't recommend that one enough. Julka hot tap system is good because it's got everything you pretty much need, you just plug and play pretty much. And uh, so if you ever want to go and have a look at that, go and have a look at it, they're, they're good things. Uh, over here we've got our hoses, so we've got the, uh, the flat hoses. Uh, so this was a, the flat hose which pulls out and uh, so the reason we did that is because uh, we wanted to be able to try and squeeze the hose inside here. Uh, it's a little bit tight uh, in here and we tried one of the other ones on the big reels and it just wasn't working. That one works well. One thing I will point out, you might notice on this one here, it's got a bit of uh, black tape on the end of it. We did it on our last camping trip. Um, some, sometimes I think you might need a, like a pressure reduction valve or something like that. Uh, it started to blow up and almost popped on us, so, so that was uh, an interesting thing. We got two of them in case we were a fair way away, so uh, one of the trips we actually did, we needed, needed uh, a longer hose, so we just plugged two of them together and we do it that way. It's also great at home, you want to uh, fill it up. Our tap's right down the back of the house, so I run the hose up and we can fill it up that way as well. So uh, You'll notice over the, the far side over here, we've got uh, one of the gas cylinders as well, so um, and that's the gas cylinder which actually uh, works for our hot water system. We actually keep another one over the other side here as well, so we haven't got anything in there at the moment, but we keep a gas cylinder in there as also uh, normally uh, as well. Uh, so up top up here we couple, keep a couple of things like uh, security things. So it's got some security cables up there, so if, if we ever go off and we want to put our solar panels out, it's got a little alarm on there so you can hook that stuff up and you don't need to worry about it as much. Uh, we keep like our, our washing up stuff, you know, so if you're washing your clothes and that, keep all that stuff in there as well. And at the end we keep our mis miscellaneous bits and pieces, all our cables and that that we use also. Uh, you'll notice in behind here, uh, we actually have four solar panels. Now we don't really get this out that often, but uh, the whole lot pops straight out and uh, we can put that up. So that's a panel that I built myself. It's a matter of just buying up some uh, some frames. So you can go down to Bunnings, buy some of the black tubing, the whole lot slots together. And uh, we just got a leg on each part of it and just uh, slide that out. And then we can plug that into the side of the camper trailer as well. Uh, one thing you should always have, make sure you've got a first aid kit. So we keep our first aid kit here as well, which we utilize if we ever need to. And uh, just over here, I might just get this part out and show you this one. So this is a lifesaver. I don't know if you've ever seen one of these things. So essentially what happens is on one side, uh, you put your water in, so if you fill your water up, and then what happens is this side here, sorry. So it's got a special like a pump over there, and uh, on the other side, this will pressurize it for you. On the other side, it's got a special filter in it. 
and so that filter is designed to filter out your water so that if you're in an area where there was undrinkable water you can get water that you can drink again so um, it's just something that I like little gadgets I love my, my gadgets so I just keep that in the camp front of the camp trail if we ever in a situation where we had to have water and there was no water available we could utilize that and we'd have water available as well for us uh, so just up over here a little uh, power button turn that on and that gives us lights so it's just stuck a, a light um, panel up the top up there and we've got another one sitting up underneath here as well you can see they're reflected uh, just down there as well and uh, so that gives us lights so same thing you pull in the camp you need light at night that'll get you going there also so um, we have uh, our tube fits in on the side just down there you can't really see it here but down the side over there we've got a little tube and then what that tube is designed for is when we fill up our water tanks go straight down under the underneath the trailer and uh, fills up the water tank for us as well all right guys, um, other thing I'd suggest too actually, uh, if you ever get the opportunity to, I'll just show you over here. Go and buy some of this matting. So we've got this all set, uh, the Intelligent Design non-slip liner. That's great. We've got that down the bottom here, we put it up the top as well, and just stop stuff from sliding around inside your camper trailer. Really handy. Um, so if you got if you can go and get some of that, it's really useful. Just just lie it down on the ground of the stuff that you're putting down, and you'll, you'll stop everything from sliding around inside your um, inside your unit as well. Alright guys, um, we'll continue on around. Okay guys, so I wanted to show you a little bit about my electrical panel. Something I spent a fair bit of uh, time on. Um, the way you can build something like this yourself. Essentially what I did is I thought about the things that I would want first of all to have in my electrical box and uh, then once I knew the things that I wanted in my electrical box I uh, essentially had a look online to see what products actually are available um, to be able to do it and uh, from there I sat down and I did a drawing and uh, I should be able to hopefully show you a picture up on the screen here now that uh, has got a drawing of, of how I actually designed it so I went through and drew it all out and how, it, how I would actually go about wiring it so pretty much when it came to actually uh, uh, assembling the whole lot together it was pretty easy it was just a matter of just figuring out where the stuff fits on a board so what we did next is we cut out a, a board so what we've got here we've got a, uh, a timber board with a bit of carpet on top of it and uh, that's got a little bit of space over the side of it bit hard to see but over the side over there it's got a little band and that little band essentially uh, holds the board uh, closed so it's got all the wires and like it sitting in behind the board up here so uh, I'll show you a little bit about what we've what we've got uh, happening here so up the top uh, left or top top right it'll be on your side of the screen up there we've got a uh, the CTEC D250 S Jewel and uh, what that actually does is actually is taking uh, power from a solar panel. Now this camper trail actually has a solar panel sitting up on top up here and uh, see if you can see over here Luella. Uh, we've got another panel sitting over here. This one here just sits on with magnets. We've got this um, magnet sitting up here and the whole thing just sits up there so when we're driving it doesn't get in the way of anything and, uh, and uh, can help charge the, um, the, uh, the batteries as well. So back over in here. So what actually happens then is power comes in through the, the, uh, the solar panel. So at the moment we have the little green light up top up there indicating the power's coming in that way and then that indicates it's going to the charger. Uh, so you might be wondering what this uh, other part here is underneath here. So uh, that part over there is called the CTEC Smart Pass. And what that actually is designed to do um, is uh, essentially it's designed for higher current devices. So if you want to be charging at a higher current, you can. So we've actually got a, um, a way we can actually add extra panels onto this. So at the moment, there's only two solar panels sitting on it, but we provided a method so that when we were camping, we could actually add in extra solar panels onto it as well. And uh, so I'll show you what we've done just over here. Can you just see over here, Luella? Mm -hmm. So just over here, we've got a little uh, plug and that just pops out and uh, that allows us essentially to add in extra solar panels and that uh, essentially will tap into this, uh, the solar panels we've got in there at the moment and it allows us to add extra um, panels onto it. So uh, around about, to, I think it's, we can plug in another, um, we've got four or five panels there that, that hook up to that if we ever want to. Um, the other thing we did over here as well is uh, we've actually got um, the 240 volt plug and uh, that 240 volt plug is designed so if we ever go to a caravan park or something like that we can actually charge the system as well and we'll show you how we do that also so uh, just back in here I'll just bring the camera over here so you can see a bit clearer so um, just over this side just up over here 
can you see these, these cables going up there? So those cables up there, so what actually happens is uh, we've got some of them coming from the uh, one of the solar panels up on top of the roof and the other one coming from the uh, other panel over on the side over here as well. So essentially all the panels all join into one uh, to, to charge the, um, the D250S and then from there that actually goes down and right underneath here, unfortunately we can't see it, but there's a massive battery. It's uh, around about a 300 amp hour battery that's sitting down there. It's a big heavy, heavy one. And uh, so we just sit that underneath, that, that sits in the front of the kitchen there uh, where that pushes in. Uh, so the other things we've got going on here as well, uh, so what we can see up here on the little CTEC monitor, we can see the current going in, look we're not getting much at the moment, 100 milliamps, nothing really, but we're pretty much fully charged anyway, so we're at 13 volts. Uh, so we can um, get all that information from up there. This uh, big red switch here, so what that actually does is that actually um, uh, adjusts the power so we can turn the power off to the entire system. So if we ever want to disconnect the rest of the system, we just turn that one switch and that disconnects everything uh, in one go. Uh, so the other things we've got going on here as well, so we'll notice, we'll just move this over again so we can see a bit more clearly over here. So up here, uh, this is our main panel. So essentially we've got this one over here, this just turns all our lights on and off. So, so if we ever um, pull into camp at night time, I know where to go and find the switch that actually turns the lights on in here. Uh, so that one there does our lights. Next one over here does our water tank. So if we just turn that on, you'll hear our, our, our pump come on. And uh, so that does our water. So when we're camping, we just turn that on as we need to. We don't leave it on all the time. Um, and then the next one over here, we've got, um, this is just for our lights. So we'll notice up in, underneath here, we actually have a little switch panel. I can turn that on and uh, it turns on the lights in here for us. So uh, what we did is we just put a little switch panel just sitting up, up over here, just near the fire extinguisher. So uh, we'll just show you that there now. So we just adjust this little dial and it turns it down and then we turn it the other way and that turns them up again for us. So uh, yeah, make sure you put a fire extinguisher wherever you do this type of stuff. Uh, it's a handy thing to have if you ever should have any issues. So I'll give you that back to you, Luella. Uh, so just turn it off for the moment. Actually, you might leave it on. You might be able to see things a bit clearer. <laughs> Um, so, uh, so yeah, you can see like the sun's coming out now. We're getting about 1.2 amps going into the sol into the batteries from our solar array. Uh, so then we've got uh, so after our, our lights, uh, we've got this one here does our front box. So we've got a box over here at the front. And generally, what we'll do is if we uh, head off uh, off road and we think you know we might be getting to camp late, what else I'll do is I'll actually turn that one there on. And uh, what that'll do is over the side over here. We'll just show you this in a moment. Just turn that one on. So you'll see there's a red light. And uh, can you just uh, focus in on that light there, sweetheart, for us? And just as by turning the switch on and off in here, that shows us that uh, the lights are on inside and we can turn them on and off from here if, if we want to. So if we come into camp and we want to turn the, the uh, side lights on, we turn this one here on and that will turn the side lights on for us. So it's just a way, you know, at night time, if you, you do pull into camp um, late at night, there's a way that without having to try and pull everything out, that you could actually just turn some lights on so you can have some light outside the campsite as well. So, uh, so I'll just show you back in here. So. So that one there is actually the lights for our inside our, um, our box here at the front. So we'll show you that in just in a moment as well. Uh, next one's just a spare, we haven't got anything on that one. This one here does our radio. So this radio up top up here uh, comes on. And uh, so we've got that hooked up via Bluetooth. And it's great because uh, you can have your iPad or whatever device handy. And uh, what it'll do is it'll connect to that device and uh, then you can have music at your campsite. We've added uh, four speakers to this and uh, they're on a bit of wire so you can move the speakers out uh, into the area where you're actually camping and have a little bit of music. So um, one, one challenge we had, we had to find a short radio, something that was really stubby because we haven't got a lot of depth in behind that. And uh, so we had to get that to actually fit in there. So um, we just, that's a cheap one, it's only like 30 bucks I think off, um, off eBay. So um, yeah. Uh, so uh, next one over here, this is our side lights. Um, so I just mentioned that to you before. That one turns on our side lights when we, when we pull into camp. And uh, the last one, this does all our main lights in the, in the camper trailer. So you turn that one on and all the main lights will come on. Uh, so the other thing we'll notice as well is just down here, we've got the main switch. Now what this switch does is this will turn off the power to all the lights, so everything, everything, uh, um, everything else except for our inverter, which we've got sitting here, which we'll have a look at that in a moment. And what this actually does is it shows us the amount of current that's being drawn. Uh, so it's quite handy because if, uh, if you're ever out camping and uh, you're drawing a fair bit of current from your battery and you want to know where it's coming from, you can actually turn things on and off and you can actually see the current draw, which is quite useful as well. Um, so the other thing as well, just move the drifter bag out of the way. 
So just over here, can you see that one there, Luella? So that's our, uh, it's called the M300 uh, Marine. And what that is actually designed to do, it takes in uh, 240 volts and then it puts it out and, and uh, charges our battery. So if we ever stay at a caravan park or something like that, we can plug in a 240 uh, volt power and that'll charge the battery system for us that way as well. So really, we don't really have any worries for power with this camper trailer. Uh, we pretty much got power for whatever we need. Uh, so can you sit down here, Luella? So right beside, we've got another switch. If we turn that one there on, You'll see another meter over there, it'll come on. And what that actually does is that actually hooks up our uh, DC power inverter. So we, we've disconnected it for the moment. But in, in the back in here, just see if I can get in, in there for us. So we've got our power cable. We uh, plug that into our, another uh, Anderson plug that's sitting in behind there. We'll plug that in and that'll give us 240 volt power there for us um, as well if we ever need to. I've used it a couple of times, it's been nice to have. Um, it's not a real big deal. Uh, we might mainly use it for uh, if uh, we want to make a coffee. <laughs> Uh, so we get the coffee frother out and away we go. So some of the nice little things to have. Um, the other thing as well, we'll just turn that on off for a moment. The other thing as well up here, we've got a little uh, water meter. So that shows us the amount of water we've got left in our water tank. So push that button in and we can see how full the tank is. Uh, they're pretty easy to whack in, guys. If you ever want to uh, do something like that, you just go to some of the places where they carry the water tanks. They'll have the little meters there. Essentially, they just screw straight into the um, into the tank. And uh, yeah, and uh, you just wire it straight up here because pretty much cut plug and play and away you go. Um, the other thing as well is we put over here, so I'll just notice over the side over there, uh, a Ryobi charger and so that's for our cordless drill batteries and that runs on 12 volt and uh, so what we can do is we can uh, plug that in, plug in our uh, cordless drill batteries and uh, charge those things up as well. Um, some of the other things you might notice in here, uh, so up top up here and we'll just get that one in shot for you. So just up the top up here, you'll notice we've got a 240 volt outlet. So if we ever are off camping, uh, you can uh, you can plug into a 240 volt power up there if you need to run some things. So this is the inlet. This is uh, the uh, um, the uh, what do you call it? The uh, surge arrestor, or not surge arrestor, but uh, if you ever accidentally cut a wire or, or something goes wrong, that little guy there will actually uh, uh, trip the whole, whole system so you don't have to worry about um, hurting yourself. I'm pretty sure they're compulsory on most uh, camper trailers. So um, uh, just underneath it, just over in here, can you see that Luella? So you'll see over there, we've got a little panel, we just uh, scribbled on it. Uh, it's got our, tells us what uh, amperage we've got on these things and uh, so we put all our fuses in there. So we uh, wrote a little amperage that we put on everything over there as well and um, so that comes in handy too. So pretty much everything goes through that fuse box first before it goes through any of those switches. Um, yeah. So that's the bulk of what we've done in here. We put two lights up top up there as well. Uh, we've got a nice big fat fuse sitting up over here. So can you see that one Luella? Yeah. So just see up over there, we put a nice big fat fuse up there. That's uh, uh, essentially designed so this one here comes from, our, from the vehicle. So it goes into the alternator side. Generally if you've got a, a D250S, uh, what you'll do is you'll wire your, your, this guy here straight up over here. When you, when you put it with the smart pass, so this allows a high current to, be ch uh, to charge your batteries, what actually happens is that the positive wire uh, hooks up over here and your negative wire goes up over the side over there instead. And so that's designed so when you're actually on the road, you plug your vehicle uh, power straight into your camper trailer. And so this one here actually goes and charges that and the fuse is there just to, as a, a fail safe. Um, you might be might have noticed a couple of other things in here, guys. Uh, so we'll just show you these things over here. So just down over here, you'll see there's a little um, funny little thing with two screws on either side. There's another one over here as well and another one down over there as well. You might be wondering what they're for. What those guys actually do is they actually measure the current that actually flows between these two points and then that's displayed up on the meter. So uh, as, you, as you, um, you, you're drawing current, these guys here, just uh, the, the current flows through those points and then it displays it up on the meter above. So I just thought, uh, well, I might as well just whack it out the, out the front there. Makes it all look nice and neat and if you ever have a problem, you can at least see where all the wires and all that are going. Um, the other thing as well you might have noticed before, we just pull this down. So I've got little, these clips or fans, these are great. If you ever go camping, I'll just put that back up, and uh, you get some hot weather, uh, you use those little clips or fans. So I'll just turn these lights off here. So it's not as bright on that. Those little clips or fans, they're great. Uh, so um, generally when we go camping if we, and we end up in hot weather overnight, uh, we'll just plug those into the cigarette lighter. They draw bugger all current. They're really good on current wise. Uh, they draw a really small amount of current um, on them. 
And uh, so that's the bulk of our electrical. We'll show you um, uh, some stuff we've got around the other side as well of the camper trailer. And uh, yeah, all right, here we go.